pray that your spirit would just infiltrate this place right now, that people would feel free to surrender themselves to you, God, and that they would just sing out knowing this truth, God. Sing peace, peace, bring it all to peace. The storm surrounding me, let it break at your name.
if we would just surrender everything we have, all of our plans, all of our affections, God, every single thing we have, we would give to you. We would worship you and surrender and in truth and in spirit, God, because you are so good all the time. And let us never, ever forget that, God. Would you just bless the speaker right now and just be in this place, God. Infiltrate every single heart. Let us be um, soft-hearted to your spirit, God, and just recognize your presence in this room and your sovereignty over our lives and over this moment. And I just pray this all in your name. We give campus band a hand. Can we do that? Maybe. Do y'all want campus band to sing some more? Yes? Well, they're not. They'll be back up later if I don't preach too long. Sound good? So some of you are going to be saying you're going to need to land the plane really quickly and need to do it how many of you have seen the thing go around sadie robertson was huge on it last year I saw some of you do it but the whole bring your bible to school any of y'all see that bring your bible to school kind of thing yeah they're doing that again this year october 4th am i right on that you might want to confirm that october 4th October 4th, confirm that if I'm wrong. I'm going to throw it out on social media. But I'm going to encourage you guys, October 4th, bring your Bible to school day. Let's represent, let's show people the greatest news on the face of the planet. Let's bring our Bibles, just like we bring our school books, our math books, when we don't forget them, all those good stuff. Can we do that? Yeah. Thursday, October 3rd. See, I needed somebody to confirm it. October 3rd, put that in your calendar for those of you Apple users, if not, put it somewhere. Tell Siri, you can tell Siri right now. I use Siri. You can use Siri too. October 3rd. Can y'all bring your Bibles? So I bring my phone. No, like bring a hard copy. Can you bring a hard copy? Okay, cool. Because some of you are like, are they on Snapchat, on Instagram? What are they on? We want people to know we're in our Bibles. Well, how many of you have ever boxed before? You box? Who wants to box? I'm just kidding. Man, we got a bunch of fighters tonight. Not a bunch of lovers, but a bunch of fighters. How many of you have ever watched a boxing match before? How many of you have ever seen one live? Because I've seen one on TV, never seen one live. Is it the real deal? How many of you have ever seen UFC? That's a whole other ball game, isn't it? That is insane. But if you've ever boxed before, sometimes I think you look a little funny. How many of you would say that? Yeah, I think you look a little funny. Especially with what you're wearing. No, that ain't wrestling, bro. Boxing, a little bit. A little bit sometimes funny, right? But how many of you know it takes a lot of discipline, a lot of hard work to be a boxer? Y'all know that? It takes a lot of hard work. And it costs you a lot, right? How much does it cost you? A lot? Does it cost you money? Yeah? Not if you win, it doesn't cost you a lot of money. That's a good statement. But it costs you something. It costs you hard work. Do you think it could cost you a black eye? Yeah? You think it could cost you a broken bone? Yeah? How many have ever seen a lot of blood? And boxing. Yeah. If you haven't, I want you to see a picture. I'll show a picture. It gets pretty serious, right? Here's one that's even more gruesome. That one got a little bit worse, right? Because that's not boxing, right? Like, that's UFC, right? But we're 
on this brand new series called Blood, Sweat, and Tears. And the first thing that I want to talk about tonight is this aspect of blood. If you're going to sign up to box, you know it's going to cost you a little blood, right? You know that's going to go into it. Some of you, when you sign up to play football, you know what you're signing up for. It's going to cost you. It's going to cost you some afternoons. Some of you Blue Ridge High football players, it was costing you mornings because it was too hot to practice in the afternoon. It was costing you mornings to practice. When you sign up for something, it's going to cost you. And some of you, your parents are here, and you're like, it ain't cost you anything. It's cost me a lot of money to pay for that uniform, to, play, to pay for whatever, right? But there's a cost involved in almost any single thing that you do. But let me ask you this question. What has your relationship with Jesus cost you? Think about it for a second. What has your relationship with Jesus cost you? What does it cost you? Because if it hasn't cost you anything, you might not be following Jesus. I'm just being real. But what has your relationship with Jesus cost you? I want you to think about that tonight. If you're taking notes, and I encourage you to take notes, because if you take notes, you get what? Free Chick-fil-A. And I still owe one of you a $5 gift card, right? Yep, I got you. I know, I forget about you. See, there's a cost in following Jesus. Did y'all know that? There's a cost in following Jesus. See, receiving Jesus is free, but following Jesus is costly. If you check out, you fall asleep, I want you to remember that one statement. Your mom or dad, hey, what did you learn tonight? Listen, receiving Jesus is free, but following Jesus is costly. All we did is receive this gift of salvation. It's by grace you've been saved through faith. It was a gift that's been given to you. It's absolutely free. Your salvation. But the moment you chose to follow Jesus, you committed your life to Jesus. There's a cost involved. There's a cost. So what's your relationship with Jesus costing you? Because if it hasn't cost you anything, you might not be following Jesus. Say, I'm going to be real. If you have your Bibles with you, if you don't, make sure you stop by the great room. We want to give you one. Even someone during worship stopped by and got a Bible. That excites me. But if you have your Bibles, your Bible app, or you don't even have your phone, you're like, it's under my seat. I don't want to be tempted to snap. Look at the screens with me, all right? Go with me to Luke chapter 14. Luke 14. start in verse 27. I'm going to read a little bit of verse 25. We're not going to have it up there. But I just want to give you the context of the scripture here. What's the uh, title there? Y'all see a verse above verse 25. The cost of being a disciple. So if you, like I say, are taking notes, my message title tonight is this. Consider the cost. Consider the the cost. Receiving Jesus is free. Following Jesus is costly. The cost of being a disciple. Jesus is really about to tell us, man, this is what it's all about when you follow me. So at this point, you think Jesus is a pretty big deal. How many of you think Jesus is a pretty big deal at this time right now in Luke chapter 14? He's a big deal. If y'all thought Kanye was a big deal... Ain't got nothing on Jesus. Did y'all see the video of him in a church service? Any of y'all see that? If you haven't, as you see, it's actually pretty good. Normally I don't endorse Kanye, but it was actually really good. 
think God's doing something in his life anyway. Chapter 14, verse 25 says, Large crowds were traveling with Jesus. And turning to them, he said this. Here we are in verse 27. And anyone who does not carry his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Whoa, Jesus. Back up a little bit. Back up. That's a huge cost. He says, if anyone does not carry his cross and follow me, cannot be my disciple. Jesus, come on. Thought this thing was going to be easy. Consider the cost. He goes on to say in verse 28, suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Will he not first sit down, estimate the cost, consider the cost. To see if he has enough money to complete it. For if he lays the foundation and is not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule him. Saying, this fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Large crowds. Large crowds are following Jesus. He's about to dwindle down in the crowd. Because a lot of people are like, hey Jesus, I want to follow you. You've done some pretty cool things. You've done some miracles. Man, I want to see some more of that. Like, you're a pretty cool guy. And Jesus is like, hey, I'm about to tell you what it's going to cost to follow me. It's going to be costly to follow me, to be my disciple. He's like, man, first you're going to have to carry your cross. You know what the cross meant back in the day? Because some of us get it twisted because you might see some people who have a, like, cross necklace. Have y'all seen people with a cross necklace? Sometimes they're like, do you know what you're wearing? Like it was a form of execution. Like one of the worst deaths you possibly could endure back in the day. It was as if like you're wearing the electric chair around your neck. Like back in the day, if you were carrying a cross, if you had a cross necklace on, they're like, man, he is wearing the electric chair. Like they knew what it was all about. They knew what they were signing up for. And he even goes on to say, suppose he wants to build a tower. Will he not first sit down and estimate the cost? And you're going to build something. If you're going to be smart about it, you're going to consider the cost. Some of you, when you chose to follow Jesus, you didn't consider the cross. You might have just wanted a Savior, but you didn't want for the Lord. And the full gospel is we got to follow Jesus not only as our Savior, but our Lord. We serve a God who not only wants to save us from our sins, but wants to be the Lord of our lives. And in order for him to be the Lord of our lives, it's going to cost us something. Jesus wasn't looking for crowds, but commitment to discipleship. He wasn't looking for crowds. He was looking for commitment to discipleship. He wanted disciples. How many disciples did Jesus have? How many? Twelve. Let me ask you this. Those twelve disciples who followed Jesus, did it cost them something? Yeah. What did it cost them? Y'all know what it cost them? Left their entire lives, but the end result, all those twelve disciples, what did it cost them? Their lives. Some of you can barely see this over here. But on this cross over here is the names of the 12 disciples. I wanted y'all to remember tonight what it cost the disciples. It cost them their lives. Some of you are like, what happened to some of the disciples? Like, tell me what happened. Because when they heard Jesus say these words, they knew the cost that they were signing up for. They knew the cost. When you guys sign up to play football, you might sign up to box. You're like, this could happen. This could happen. Let's look at what the 12 disciples went through. Can we look at it real quickly? Andrew, crucified. 
Bartholomew, beaten, then crucified. He's like, let's beat you up, and then I'm going to crucify you. James, stoned to death. Some of you are like, I've been hit by a rock. That'd be pretty crazy, but imagine being stoned to death by rocks. Here's this next one. And I thought about being morbid tonight with Halloween coming around, but then you guys would go home, and you'd be like, this is what Huck said tonight. He held up a head. And I wasn't going to do that to you. But think for a second. This has even happened overseas these days. The other James was beheaded. Salvation is free, but discipleship is costly. Following Jesus is costly. He's beheaded. John exiled for his faith. Judas, of course, not as scary, but was stoned to death. You all know the other Judas. Matthew, speared to death. So I even brought this to show you all. Speared to death. Speared to death. Speared to death. Jesus, hey, come to follow me. You want to be my disciple? You might be beheaded. You might be crucified. You might be speared to death. You might even be stoned to death. Hey, you want to follow me? Many of us would have said, you know what? I'm good. I'm good. Think for a second. The disciples knew what they were getting into. They knew they were getting into. It could cost them their life, but they, cho they still chose to follow Jesus. Still chose. You know what? I encourage you guys. To follow Jesus, you know what we do sometimes? I don't know, man. They, they might make fun of me. I don't know if I bring my Bible to school. Someone might see me reading it. Can you think for a second what James would have thought? Dude, I'm getting about to get beheaded, and you're worried about someone making fun of you? Someone was walking on Wednesday night, and Jesus has paid a high price. We're like, I don't know. I don't know if I can raise my hand. And James is like, what? You can't raise your hand. Like, no one's going to walk in here and harm you. No one's going to walk in here and behead you. You can't worship Jesus? No, I'm afraid. Like, he might not think I'm cool. She might not think I'm cool. Like, I don't know if I can, I can worship Jesus. What do you think the disciples would think if we began to give those excuses? This is what I know to be true, and you can see it all through the New Testament. When the disciples gave their lives, like the gospel spread. And this is what I want you to remember. Where blood is shed, the gospel spreads. Where blood is shed, the gospel spreads. That's what happened when they gave their lives. The gospel spread. People came to know Jesus because they were like, if that guy will give up his life for the name of Jesus, man, I want what he has. What do you think would happen if we began to take stands at our school for the name of Jesus, knowing what he's done for us? What ripple effect would take place? More and more people would do it. More and more people would come to know Christ. Like I said, death didn't stop the disciples from following Jesus, but opinions from others keep us from following Jesus. When Jesus says, man, follow me, carry your cross, consider the cost. You're going to consider the cost when you build something. He's requiring up front a commitment to the highest possible cost. But listen, if I preach this, this message 99% of the time, you know how many people would give their lives to Jesus? Not too many, right? Hey, follow Jesus. It's going to cost you your life. I don't know how many people would do it, would they? Because we love the aspect of the gospel when it comes to, hey, I want to be saved from hell. I want to be saved from my sins. But then... 
taking that next step of discipleship that requires blood, sweat, and tears. We're kind of reluctant. What do you mean? I'm not going to be able to do me and do my life? What do you mean? It, it, it's going to cost you more than Wednesday nights and Sunday mornings. If following Jesus is only costing you Wednesday nights and Sunday mornings, I'm telling you, you're not following Jesus. You're following church. When Jesus said, follow me, he wasn't saying, hey, follow me on Wednesday nights and Sunday mornings. He's saying, no, follow me daily. He says, man, I want all of you. I just don't want some of you. I don't want a part of you. Man, I want all of you. I want all of you. Would we be willing to say tonight, like Jesus, I'm yours at any cost? Because that was the 12 disciples. Hey, I'm yours at any cost. Because if it means me being crucified, even Peter, you know the loudmouth Peter, he was crucified upside down. It's already humiliated enough to be crucified right side up, but imagine being crucified upside down. But that didn't stop Peter from proclaiming the name of Jesus. What's stopping us from living for Jesus? Let me ask you, what does your relationship with Jesus cost you? Because if you're following Jesus and he's the Lord of your life, it's going to cost you some things. You know what it cost me when I was in middle school or high school? It cost me a relationship with a girl. Because she was going one direction and I was going another direction. She wasn't following Jesus. It cost me that relationship. But guess what? Whatever you give up, God replaces with something so much better when you choose to follow him. Because you know what? I have the best life in the world. What if I was still with that girl wasn't following Jesus? Think about this for a second. You ready? Because the message is considering the cost of following Jesus. But consider the cost for a second of not following Jesus. Consider the cost of not following Jesus. Just telling you right now, it's going to be a million times worse. A million times worse. Because without Jesus, there's no life. Without Jesus, there's no freedom. Without Jesus, there's no peace. But when we follow Jesus, he never said it was going to be easy, but it's always going to be worth it. Always. Some of you are like, but if I chose to follow Jesus, it's going to cost me my Friday nights that, man, I love it. We do it up. Is that what you're really living for is Friday night? Friday night. Is that what life is all about? It's not what life's all about. Some of you are like, I couldn't follow Jesus because I'm not giving that up. Listen, Jesus is the best replacement for any single thing that you might be trying to fill with him because it's not going to fulfill you. It's not. When you choose to follow Jesus, there's no, like, negotiating. Because some of you know this wouldn't work, all right? Let's say you're like, hey, I will play football as long as nobody hits me. <laughs> Somebody like, you ain't playing football, you're playing flag football, all right? But think about it. If you went up to your coach and you're like, hey, coach, sign me up. I guess you'd be the kicker, right? But as long as nobody hits me. All right, coach, I'm in. You got me for two quarters. So you're like, what? No, when you sign up, you sign up, right? When the disciples, when he's talking to them, consider the cost. Carry your cross. They knew the commitment that was involved. Some of you have said, you know what? Yeah, Jesus, I got you. Got you Wednesday night, Sunday mornings, but when we go to school, I can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. You're like, I I'm not all in like that. And 
disciples who gave their lives for Jesus are like, what? You're going to school in air conditioning. You're going to school and you don't have to worry about being beheaded for your faith, but you still won't proclaim the name of Jesus. so scared of? What are you so scared of? See, if God asks you to give something up, it's most likely because it's competing with him. God is a jealous God who wants all of you. He wants to be your first love. And if he's asking you to give something up that you're like, no, I couldn't give this up. I never could give this up. He knows it's competing with him. The disciples gave their lives up for you, right? Like, I know, it's not for me. They gave them up for Jesus, right? They had their eyes fixed on Jesus. And I think that's the problem. When we think about the cost of following Jesus, we start thinking about what other people are going to think instead of what Jesus thinks. They had one thing in mind. That was to make much of Jesus. They weren't worried about what other people were thinking. But somehow, one of the biggest things we're worried about is how many followers we have on Instagram. If this picture is going to look good, if we post it or not. How are we going to look when we go to school tomorrow? Those are our biggest things that we worry about. When they knew, hey, eternity's at stake. Their main mission, hey, I'm waking up tomorrow. And my main mission is, hey, let me follow Jesus with everything. It might cost me my life tomorrow. I might be stoned to death for it. I might be speared to death for it. But you know what? I know it's going to be worth it. Jesus is my highest prize. What's your relationship with Jesus cost me? Here's the biggest thing that I want to end on. Because we live for Jesus, who did what? Jesus gave his life for you. He gave up his life for you. Jesus died for you so that you would live for him. And what I love about it is Jesus chooses to walk with us daily. He doesn't just abandon us. He walks with us. He gave up everything. But sometimes we only give up some things. And we think we're following Jesus. When really we're following church, we're following something else that's not in the Bible. I'm going to ask you just to think for a second. How is your life different since you chose to follow Jesus? Is anything different? Because if nothing is different, then maybe you really have not said, you know what, God, I surrender my life to you. I commit my life to you. But here's what happens when we truly give our lives to Jesus. Is there's a different direction that we take. Because at first, man, we're following sin, we're living for ourselves, then when we give our lives to Jesus, we live for Jesus and we live every single day for Jesus, to make much of Jesus, to please Jesus. We die to ourselves. We take up our cross. Jesus gave it all up for you. He didn't say, you know what, I'll go halfway for these people. He's like, no, I am going the whole way. See, Jesus didn't hold anything back, but sometimes we hold things back. What are you holding back when it comes to following Jesus? 
Some of you are here, the enemy is convincing you that's going to cost me way too much. I got a group of friends right now, and we do some things I know I'm not supposed to be doing. But there's no way I can give up that group of friends. Like, no, that's my squad. And you know, if you keep hanging out with those friends and they're taking you in that direction, bad things are going to happen. Can I encourage you to consider the cost? Jesus died a high price for us. For us not even to play with sin, think about sin. Consider the cost. Consider. I love what this guy named John Calvin said. He says, I gave up all for Christ. And what have I found? I found everything in Christ. Hey, I gave it all up, but I found everything in Christ. And with this last example, how many of you have ever flown before? Ever flown? Yeah. If you've ever flown, like you pay a price to get on that plane. Cost you money for the ticket you get on the plane. But let's just say for a second, I'm like, you know what? Hey, I'm gonna pay for your ticket to get on the plane. So to get on the plane was absolutely free, no charge to you. But check this out, it's gonna cost you everything. You wanna know why? Because you're entrusting your life to a pilot that you don't even know. You're entrusting your life with him that you're gonna land safely, that you're not gonna crash. You're entrusting your life with that pilot who you don't even know. Can I encourage you to entrust your life with a God that you do know? But when you put your life in his hands, you're going to be in the best hands possible. That he has everything in control. Some of you are like, man, but following Jesus is so hard. Listen, I'm telling you, it's worth it. So worth it. In this world, you will go through tribulation. You will have trouble. But can I encourage you, just like Jesus said in John 16, 33, take heart. He's overcome the world. You guys can follow Jesus. Maybe you're here and you're considering the cost. I'm telling you it's worth it to follow Jesus. Yes, he's all about eternal life. But another thing, he's all about abundant life. If you're looking for the abundant life, Jesus offers it. And he died on a cross you. The 12 disciples gave up their lives for you. They knew what it was all about when Jesus said, hey, come follow me, take up your cross, deny yourself and follow me. They knew, man, I'm in. Could be beheaded, could be crucified, but Jesus, you got me. I'm in for the long haul because I want to make much of you following you is what it's all about. Imagine what would happen. You said, Jesus, I'll follow you at any cost. Maybe you're here tonight with heads bowed and eyes closed. You'd say, I don't have a relationship with Jesus. I didn't know there was somebody who cared that much about me who would give their life for me. I had no clue there was a God who wanted to save me from my sins. You don't have a relationship with Jesus. You never surrendered your life to Jesus. There's a cost in not following Jesus. I'm going to shoot it straight with you. The, the cost of not following Jesus. Our destination is hell. But the biggest thing is our destination is separation from a God who loves you more than anything in the world. Maybe you're here tonight and you're like, I don't want the cost of not following Jesus. What I want is the, the cost of following Jesus. I get his salvation is free. I know there's going to be a cost. It's going to cost me maybe friends. It's going to cost me things on the weekends. It's going to cost me things. But I want to follow Jesus. I want not only eternal life, but I want abundant life. If you're here tonight with heads bowed and eyes closed, you say, you know what? I've never given my life to Jesus, and I want to give my life to Jesus tonight. That's you with heads bowed and eyes closed. I want to pray for you. You can put your hand up and put it right back down. I just want to pray for you. Anybody tonight? I don't want to miss a hand. You know what? I'm here. See that hand. Anybody else? You know what? See that hand. Anybody else? I've never given my life to Jesus. I want to give my life to Jesus for the very first time. 
Maybe you're here tonight. You say, you know what? There's some things that I'm not giving up. I'm still holding back when it comes to fully surrendering everything to Jesus. And I know there's one thing in the way. I know it's going to cost me, but I know it's going to be worth it. You just be, need me to pray for you. You can put your hand off, put it right back up. See this hand, see this hand. Maybe that you're that first person tonight. And you're like, man, I need a relationship with Jesus. I just want to invite you to a relationship with Jesus. Your relationship with Jesus starts with a conversation, a prayer to God. It just starts just like this. You want to repeat this after me. God, tonight, I surrender my life to you. I repent. I turn from my sins. I choose to follow you. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Tonight, God, I not only confess you as my Savior, but my Lord. Thank you for loving me, for dying on a cross for me, for rising from the grave on the third day for me. For all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Maybe you're here tonight and you pray to receive Jesus. Can I encourage you in just a second? Find me by the gray room. Find somebody by the gray room. Tell somebody tonight, hey, I want to give my life to Jesus. Maybe you didn't raise your hand and still the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. You know you would not spend eternity in heaven, but most importantly, you want to live not only in heaven with Jesus, but you want to live an abundant life now. I encourage you to find somebody and pray with them, share that with them. But tonight, this is what I want you guys to do. I have these red markers. And when they play tonight, I want you to consider the cost before you get up. Because something, sometimes what happens is you all get up at once and you're like, I'm going to do whatever Hugs asked me to do during the invitation. Tonight, I want you to consider the cost. There's 12 disciples on this cross. When he says, hey, I want you to carry your cross, they meant, they knew that meant execution, that meant death, that meant giving up a lot. Some of them left their families, left their lives to follow Jesus. Tonight, when you come up and you grab one of these markers, I want you to write your name on the cross. If you're like, hey, from this day forward, I want to follow Jesus at any cost. You're like, Jesus, I'm yours at any cost. We've had the uncommitted wall. Can I encourage you again to say, hey, you know what? God, I'm still committed. I'm going to follow you at any cost. I'm going to worship you at any cost. I'm going to do anything and everything I possibly can to bring people to know you at any cost. I don't care if it's going to co cost me my reputation. I don't care if it's going to cost me a relationship. Because, hey, following you is worth it. See if people come to know you is worth it. So as they begin to sing tonight, may I invite you just to take a second, reflect, consider the cost, and if you're like, man, God, I'm in, at any cost, come up, sign the cross. Maybe you need someone to pray with. I'm over by the great room. Maybe you tonight you said, you know what? I choose to follow Jesus, never give my life to Jesus. Please find me, tell me the greatest news on the face of the planet. Please do that. You guys respond.
Make your way there. Goodbye. Count to three one more time. Nothing magical about me counting. We'll break into small groups here in a second. Share that with your small group. Hey, you know, my relationship with Jesus. Even tell them right now, man, I got doubts about God. Got doubts. If you're here tonight, you need to surrender your life to Jesus. Don't let anything hold you back. Don't let anything hold you back. That's you on three. One, two, three. Anybody tonight? You know I need to give my life to Jesus. Anybody tonight? Anybody tonight? God, tonight I pray for these students. Pray they're considering the cost of following you. God, it's worth it. You're worth it. You've always been worth it, and you always will be worth it. Following you is the greatest joy on the face of the planet. No matter if it costs us our lives, no matter if it costs us relationships, God, following you is worth it. God, may you continue to work on our hearts as we continue to seek you tonight. For all these things in the name of Jesus.